Ah, so let me weigh in on this Rogan versus Neil Young Spotify thing because Neil Young uh, wanted to have his music taken off of Spotify because of Rogan's ability to get other people's opinions on the coof. Now I'm going to flip this thing a little bit differently because I suspect that the coof is not the reason there is so much attention to this story. Stick to the end, I'll give you the reason as to why. Now, before I get into this, two things. Firstly, let me give a warning, I am going to swear excessively during this because bullshit like this irks the tits off me. Secondly, Joe did not apologize for jack shit. I've seen people in comment sections lose their fucking minds because of some headlines. Clearly, these people didn't listen to what Joe actually said. He said he is sorry that Spotify is getting embroiled in all of this and that they are taking so much heat for it. I'm not exactly sure what Joe is apologizing for. It's not his fault, or even Spotify's for that matter, that a bunch of fucking retards have stupid opinions over something they know absolutely fuck all about. So let me just say it straight, I am pro-Rogan, obviously. Neil Young is a pathetic has-been who has nothing to offer the world, and no one is paying attention to him. This is just a pathetically desperate attempt to appear culturally relevant for the first time in many a decade, and I suspect I am not the only one that shares that opinion. So of course we have the mouthpieces on the decayed platform that is TV land coming out and defending the good old corporate cocksucker that is Neil Young, and those mouthpieces happen to come in the form of the drowning sock puppets that appear on The View. Dear ladies on The View, allow me to give a brutally honest assessment of your current worth to society, alright? You are all useless. Your opinions are stupid. No one cares what you have to say about anything. You are nothing but a gossiping sewing circle with cameras pointed at you. Your only value in society is being the background noise in the homes of postmenopausal women or as cannon fodder for mockery. Rogan is one man and there's five of you women and he pulls in a larger audience than all of you combined multiple times over. Hell, Joe can whip out his phone and say, Hi, how is everyone doing this morning? And more people would watch that than anything you have to put out. These fucking spastics come out and say there needs to be some disclaimer on Rogan's podcast to warn people of misinformation. Now, let's dig into that for a moment, shall we? Because being a man of sound mind and body, that already makes me more qualified than any of those five miserable harpies to talk about this. <laughs> that and I am more entertaining. Actually, there was one funny thing that was said. One girl came out and said that people are hungry for conversations. And that was replied to with, well, that's what we do on this show. Woman. You lot don't have conversations. You are five cackling hens who are all in synchronizing agreement. That is not a conversation, that's a circle joke for fuck's sakes. But getting back to the coof dialogue and the disclaimer on Rogan, who exactly do you happy suppose would be the consulted third party that qualifies the information on the podcast as misinformation exactly? Do you think Spotify is going to hire some grand council of immunologists and virologists as staff to give their take on it, do you? Or do you think it's going to be some bint guzzling enough Pfizer jizz to induce immaculate conception? Because my money would be on you arsats only being satisfied with the latter. I hate these posturing sycophants who go, Oh, Joe Rogan is spreading misinformation. I think Joe Rogan's a horror. What misinformation, you useless assholes? Present us with this misinformation so that us mere peasants may learn from thee, O oh, wise sages of medical expertise. Tell us this great misinformation, and while you're at it, would you mind giving us insight as to who exactly is your superior authority that led you to this almighty conclusion, why don't you? Joe is the only one who came out and said something sane about misinformation, saying the problem with the term, aside from the fact that everyone who uses it can never give you a fucking example of what it even is, is that everything that was labeled as misinformation in the past is acknowledged as true now. Something that us tinfoil hat wearers have been saying for fucking ages, but whatever, it's not our fault that the vast majority of society are too stupid to notice the blindingly obvious. Another reason that it pisses me off is the policy terms, because you can take an excerpt from, say, a corporate outlet and show the exact same clip on one of your own videos, and it will be labeled as misinformation because there's a lag time in the information coming out in conjunction with the policy, which, as a content creator, just drives you up the damn wall. Honestly, it pisses me off that Joe came out somewhat agreeing with this. And what Spotify wants to do is at the beginning of these controversial podcasts eh, to have a disclaimer. The opinions that they express are contrary to the opinions of the consensus of experts. Those are Joe's own words, by the way. What a condescending thing to do, as if we need to be told like we're dimwit creatures who can't formulate our own opinion. Everyone who watches Joe already knows this. That is why many of us watch Rogan, because the mainstream opinion is fucking horseshit. Now, Joe has said what he would be open to do is having more experts with different opinions right after the controversial ones. Every one of us knows what that means when translated into real speak. 
That means mainstream corporate cocksuckers and big pharma stooges. We are not interested in what these people have to say because they already have a mainstream platform. They have nothing new to add to the conversation because they are driven by an agenda. I hate this current world where it appears as though the truth is a balancing act. It isn't. People want accurate information and after three years of bullshittery, people don't give a fuck what some mainstream talking heads have to say. Again, that's why they watch you, Joe. That dipshit CNN doctor you had on your show, did he say anything noteworthy that made people talk? No. He'll be remembered as the guy simping for the NOD after you caught the coof, getting caught like a deer in the headlights when you press him on the horseshit dewormist slander from CNN, and that he felt like you were going to vault across the table like some 80s action hero and start whooping his ass. One woman did ask, don't you want responsible corporate citizens? The fuck is that? That sounds disturbingly dystopian. No, I don't want to have a responsible corporate citizen, whatever the hell that is, dictating information to me or peddling morality. Are you insane? Who the hell made you the Ministry of Truth? These idiots come out and say, oh, Neil was never one to shy away about what's going on, whether that was the Vietnam War. It's not easy to be contrary to the popular thought. First off, what kind of a deranged idiot puts being anti-war and pro-big pharma in the intersection of a Venn diagram? I'm not exactly sure it's all that brave to come out against the war when your entire fan base is full of peace-loving stoner hippies. But opening your asshole to Pfizer? You're on the side of Big Pharma and the state. That's not an act of bravery or defiance. That's a sellout. You're as mainstream as you can fucking get. Ugh. Someone please explain this to me about our society because this is something I have a seriously difficult time trying to understand, especially psychologically. Why the hell in our society that's so pathetically fucking obsessed with being rational, even though there is zero room for a conversation about anything outside of that niche, the corporate narrative is hyper-regulated, full of talking heads who scream, follow the science. If you're a person with a growing audience especially, the more eyes there are on you for any reason whatsoever, the more there is this bizarre unspoken expectation of you to behave in a manner that is socially responsible. Accompanying this growing influence, you have a duty to tow this pre-approved regulated narrative lest you are seen as some kind of heretic for having your own opinion. And it's always people that have no expertise whatsoever in the subject matter being discussed at all. Bitch, I don't give a fuck about what some well-known actor or athlete says about anything outside of sports or entertainment. They aren't fucking intellectuals. They don't know shit about anything. Why the fuck would I care about their opinion? It just strikes me as absolutely baffling for a society that prides itself on being so hyper-focused on education and rationality, when no, actually it seems the only thing that matters for your credibility is how many people actually pay attention to you. That is how you know this issue they have with Rogan has nothing to do with misinformation. This is what they're really pissed about. Notice, every time Joe is mentioned on mainstream platforms, they will mention his audience size and his reach constantly. Their machine is losing influence on society and his is wrecking them and they hate it because they are losing power. The machinery is losing control. Joe has conversations that are long and thought-provoking and their medium is just pushing slogans over and over and over again. It is hollow, stale and outdated. It lacks the sticking power that Joe has because he is more interesting. Their machine is this multi-billion dollar conglomerate and it's getting manhandled to pieces by one guy, by a pot-smoking martial artist who likes hunting and DMT and it is driving them insane. And that's all for today. Until next time.